I want to talk to you about marriage. Marriage is really hard. <laughs> I used to think um, before I got married that it was the lesser vocation. Like, I think I thought it was easier. Um, I remember when I was 19 years old, I served with a ministry called Net Ministries. For those of you that aren't familiar, it stands for National Evangelization Team. Net is so amazing and so beautiful. And if you are between 18 and 30 and single, you could be dating someone, just not married, between 18 and 30 in the single vocation currently, you can serve with Net Ministries, either in Canada, Ireland, Uganda, Australia. Um, it's amazing. It's basically uh, like a bunch of other young Catholics coming together and they travel around the country doing retreats for secondary high school students, as we say in the States. But um, my husband, Matt and I, that's actually where we met, was serving with Net Ministries of Ireland. But when I was like 19, I was doing Net Canada and I think it was the first time I ever heard of nuns um, or that they still existed. I guess I did hear of nuns uh, in little books when I was a kid, but I didn't know that they really existed. And I remember thinking, oh, they must be super, super holy. And then when I was on net, I was blessed. Uh, one of my teammates, Annie Devlin, who's now actually a sister in Italy, her sister is one of the sisters of life, Sister Miriam Gabriel, or Sister Gabriel, Mir no, Sister Miriam, no, Sister Mary Gabriel. I just forgot her name, but she's beautiful and amazing. Um, Sister Mary Gabriel, I think that's it. Anyhow, amazing, beautiful sister. And so she was my first exposure to nuns. And I would get these letters, or Annie would get these letters from her sister, and they were just beautiful and amazing. And I remember being like, wow, nuns really exist, that's cool. And praying about it and being like, I don't wanna be a nun, I wanna be a wife and a mom. Therefore, the Lord must be calling me to be a mom, or to be a, a nun, not a wife, not a mom. And so I was like, okay, God, please, what are you doing? You know, and I thought if I was to follow God, I had to be a sister. And um, my family wasn't very supportive of it. I remember my grandmother, well-intentioned, beautiful, holy woman who just didn't understand. She's a good person. She totally doesn't understand religious life. And she said to me when I was 19, um, Cameron, you are a smart and beautiful woman. You'll be happy whatever you do in life as long as you don't become a nun. <laughs> and um, I don't know, I went and I discerned with the Sisters of Life. I went to a Youth 2000 and they had the Friars of the Renewal, the Sisters of the Renewal. Um, this is way back in the day in 2000. And um, it was amazing and awesome. And I saw these nuns, I'm more of a tomboy. And I, um, I know I don't look at it, look like it right now because I put earrings on and makeup on for y'all. You're welcome. Um, but I, I don't know, I was more of a tomboy and I saw this beautiful nun wearing a white habit or a white veil and um, she headbutted a soccer ball and there literally was a soccer ball head mark on, on her veil and I was like, okay, maybe I could do this. And, um, and I discerned with the Sisters of Life for a little bit and they're amazing and beautiful in such a great order but it wasn't the right fit for me. I remember actually when I went to spiritual direction, um, the priest that was in charge of the retreat, he was like the spiritual director for the retreat said, um, this is a very specific pond and it is beautiful and so wonderful. And I see why you're drawn to it. You are way too big of a fish to be in this pond. This is not where you belong, woman. And I was like, okay so never mind um fast forward it, but i also the thing that i thought would have been hard about being a nun is that um i don't like getting up early in the morning i'm like nuns have to get up at like 5 a.m and pray and i like praying but i don't like 5 a.m wake ups and so i thought it'll be easier if i get married and i have children well any of you that are listening that are married and have kids know that that's not true <laughs> it's freaking hard <laughs> It's really, really hard. If you are a new mom, God bless you. Be patient. You're doing great. It's really hard. I know you need encouragement. Um, it is hard. I remember talking to a woman one time and she said to me, um, she was feeling really guilty for not taking her prayer time. She used to go to daily mass and, um, and adoration. She was used to going ador to adoration weekly. And she said to me, she's like, Cameron, you know what? I'm just... It's so hard and I'm really struggling and my prayer life is suffering so much. Like I can't remember the last time I just spent time with Jesus. And I said to her, weren't you just telling me that you were up from 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. breastfeeding your baby? And she's like, yeah, I know. I was just awake in the middle of the night. I was like, that's your holy hour. That is your holy hour. Um, Catherine Doherty says, uh, she talks all about the um, duty of the moment, okay? Your call 
your duty of the moment as a mom in any, any walk in life, whatever, whatever your vocation is, your duty of the moment is what the Lord puts in front of you. So for me right now, it's doing this video with y'all. Um, for you, it's maybe listening to this. Um, if you share a house and your roommate always leaves dirty dishes in the sink and it's so annoying and you want to smack her upside the head, your duty of the moment is to wash those dishes and do it with love for love of your roommate, right? Um, young moms, your duty of the moment, your path to holiness is changing that dirty diaper. Changing it and not saying, ew, gross, the baby poop exploded everywhere, it's a total blowout, it's so bad. No, your duty of the moment is changing that diaper and saying, Jesus, I'm doing this for you. I love you, Lord. Thank you for the gift of this baby. Thank you for the gift of my vocation as a mom and as a wife. Thank you for this little bum covered in poo as I wipe it. Um, it's not always glamorous, but that's your duty of the moment. I've learned through um, marriage that it's not, it's not easy. It's actually really, really hard. Um, I think I thought it was the easier vocation, but it's not. I think the Lord doesn't call you to be a nun if you're holy and calls you to be married if you're not. Um, I think I thought that when I was like 19 or 18, but now I realize it's the Lord is going to bless you and help you in your vocation. When I can't really speak to being a sister cause I'm, I'm not. Um, so I'll let one of the nuns on here talk to that vocation. But as far as wife and mom goes, I know that pretty well. Um, as you can see in my picture, well, I don't know if you can. Peter's on top of Matt's shoulders. I don't know if you can see it. So we have four beautiful kids this side of heaven and they are, oh my goodness, fierce, <laughs> sassy, um, rambunctious, crazy, wild kids. Um, both Matt and I have big, crazy personalities and we're kind of intense in a lot. I don't know if you can tell just from this little video, but um, we have big personalities. Our kids all have really, really big personalities. They're amazing and beautiful, and they are definitely my path to holiness. And um, they help me grow in patience every day that I choose to turn to Christ and say, Lord, please give me patience. The days that I choose to yell and scream, I don't know that they're helping me grow in holiness, but that's why we have confession. And I go often and tell my kids to go often. Um, and bring them often. All of my kids now have actually uh, been blessed to receive the Sacrament of Reconciliation, and it is such a gift. Um, one of the main things I that we do in our family is when we hurt someone, which we do a lot, we're big fat sinners. And Matt and I use this in our marriage, um, but also with the kids. When we make a mistake, when we do something wrong, we go to the person and say, I'm really sorry. I messed up. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. It is not okay please forgive me. And the other person says, I forgive you. It's not, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's not a big deal. No, it's actually recognizing that we've made a mistake, humbly coming to the other person and saying, my bad. I've had to do this in front of all of my kids. It's so humbling. I don't remember what happened, but um, Matt was sitting over here on the couch and I was in the kitchen and I was, I think I was just stressed. I was just stressed and overwhelmed. It had been a long day. There was a lot of drama going on with the kids and um, I just kind of lost it. And I was really impatient and I, I definitely glared at my husband and I may have yelled at him. I forget what I did, but it was, it was not good. I did not act in a loving way. And so um, I apologized to him after it blew up. We had a big fight and, um, and we went outside and we argued it out we apologized and then I came back in in front of the kids and said, kids, I need you to know mommy shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have yelled at daddy. I shouldn't have exploded the way I did. Please forgive me. Daddy's already forgiven me and Matt was there and he said, yes, I forgave mommy. She made a mistake. I love her. I forgive her. And the kids all, we forgive you mommy. Um, and I think it's really good. It's humbling. It's very, very humbling. Um, when you are in a family, or even if, if you're engaged and listening to this, I do a lot of ministry with engaged women. And um, if you're engaged and listening, I think a lot of times girls think, once we get married, everything will be okay. You know, like right now it's hard and there's a lot of tension and, and um, yeah, tension. And uh, once we get married, then everything will be so much easier. Not really true. 
I mean, yes, you get to have sex and sex does help. That is an easy way of, you know, blurring the lines, you know, and you're like, it's not so big of a deal that he left his underwear on the floor or dirty socks for the umpteenth time. It does help, but it doesn't make everything go away. You're still going to have arguments and fights. And it's really important to, um, to continue to be humble and say, I'm sorry. Um, Matt and I try to do a date night every week. We fail at it. In fact, it is probably, it's probably been almost a month. There's lots of crazy stuff going on right now. So this is not like normal time. And some of you may be thinking like, okay, well, we have really little kids and we have no family. You could be really creative with date nights. By date night, I don't mean you and your husband have to go out to a restaurant. I mean, you and your husband have to spend time together. Um, we're gonna have a date night tonight, mainly because I took the time to like make my hair look halfway decent and put on makeup. So for me, I'm like, I'm halfway there. I put on earrings <laughs> and a cute little dress. You can't see it, but it's a cute little dress. And when my husband left this morning, I was in my pajamas. It is four o'clock in the afternoon. Honestly, I was in my pajamas until like 15 minutes ago. No, maybe 20 minutes ago, because I definitely changed before I started recording. And I took a shower, so 20 minutes ago. But that's life sometimes, okay? I am a homeschooling mom, and both Matt and I work from home, trying to run podcasts, YouTube, whatever. Um, he normally travels, but because of all the craziness that we find ourselves in with these quarantine times, he's not, but normally he travels. Um, and so for me, he told me early on in marriage, and I, and I try to do this for him, like find your husband's love language, find your spouse's love language and love them in that way. You loving him in the way you think he wants to be loved. Like for me, I think he wants to be loved by a beautiful dinner. So I spend a lot of time making this lovely, beautiful dinner. And he gets home and I'm like, I'm not really hungry. And I'm like, I made you this dinner. How dare you not be hungry? You should be starving. I made you this, feel loved. And he doesn't feel loved. He feels loved when he comes home from a trip and I look decent. It's not, early on in marriage, this applied more so because like I'd have baby spit up all over me and I would just be so tired and I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm so exhausted. These kids, take them, <laughs> give me a break. But, um, and he helps and he wants to help with the kids, but he felt loved by me not looking like a complete disaster and wreck. And, I was happy to do that. I'm like, okay, yes, you're going out, you're providing for our family. I am happy to put on a little bit of makeup and some earrings or even just put normal clothes on instead of my pajamas. <laughs> really high standards in the frat household. So, you know, I mean, you may have bigger standards, but this is, this is where we are. And making the bed. He feels love when I make the bed, okay? Most mornings, I don't make the bed. I, when he's out of town, I never make the bed because I'm just gonna get back into it. I don't think it's that big of a deal. And I norm, my kids wake up very early and they normally wake up to me. So I'm normally waking up reacting to something that's going on. So to give you an example, yesterday morning, it was 6.30 or 7 a.m. And my 12 year old ran in yelling, mom, hurry, wake up quick. Peter just drank the last of the wine. <laughs> and I get up, I'm like, what? Oh my goodness, what's going on? And I come out and I'm thinking my five-year-old has like chugged a bottle of wine or two or three bottles of wine. I'm like, oh my goodness, I gotta rush him to the hospital. No, Matt and I had a glass of wine each. And so in one of the glasses of wine, there was about this much. So my five-year-old had two sips of wine. Shouldn't have done it, but it wasn't worth the reaction of quick, hurry, you know? And so like, I'm reacting to that. And I'm like, oh my goodness, or this morning, it also was my 12 year old. It, it normally varies and it's different kids that are waking me up in like a, a really stressful state. Um, but this morning my 12 year old again ran in, quick hurry the AC guys at the door. I'm like, wait, what? What's going on? What time is it? Is the sun even up? And it was some guy putting like flyers on people's doors trying to get them to like redo their roof or something. So I ran out of bed and I was like, okay, yeah, that almost gave mommy a heart attack. Like let's take the intensity level down a notch. Um, but yeah, I react to things like that. I feel like that's how I'm dealing with my mornings and how they're getting started. But I know my husband feels loved by me making the bed. So I make my bed for love of my husband, not for me. Um, so finding a way to love your spouse is huge. Um, other ways we can grow in holiness as a wife or a mom. Um, be clear with your expectations. So for me, We've had this conversation multiple times and tomorrow is actually my husband's birthday, so say a prayer for him. Um, 
he does not have high expectations, but I have high expectations for birthdays or Mother's Day. I'm like, okay, this has gotta be great. And one year it was my birthday and um, I, Matt was traveling with work. I decided to take my four kids. And at the time my youngest, I think was three and my oldest was nine. I decided to take them on a bus with like a hundred other people or 50 other people through a church to go to the March for Life. And it was my birthday and I'm on this bus that went, took forever long and the bathroom reeked, like it smelled really bad. And, um, and I'm like, this is my birthday. This is how I'm spending my birthday. But it was really good. I was like, all right, Lord, I offer all of this up for all those babies and all the moms that aren't sure what to do and they find themselves pregnant and they're just, they're scared and they don't know what to do. They don't think they can handle a child. Lord, I offer all of this up for them to intercede and bless them. And it was so good. And, and I think that birthday helped me kind of get over my super high expectations um, and just, yeah, letting each other know. So Matt wants to sleep in tomorrow. I'm like, okay, I can do that. That's not too much. It's very easy for me to, actually it's a, it's a huge sacrifice for me to get out of bed early, but I will do it because I love my husband and he's communicated that's what he would like. Um, I think that um, being a mom and being a wife is really hard and it's not, um, and you shouldn't try to look like a nun <laughs> or you shouldn't try to look like another mom that you think's picture perfect. And like, oh my goodness, if I could just be as good as her. I actually just did an episode with Kristalina Everett on this, um, a podcast episode on this about um, comparison. And um, we need to be who the Lord's created us to be. We need to rejoice in others. So like, this is amazing. This whole co Catholic conference thing, I'm like, good on y'all. This is great that you're doing this. I don't have the time or energy to be doing this, but I'm happy to do a video. Like this is what I can handle right now, right? Um, but I think sometimes we can complain and be like, oh, well, if I can't be putting this together, then I'm failing. Or if I can't have an app, you know, um, or if I can't, whatever it is, fill in the blank, you know, um, you are not called to be me. You're not called to be Cameron Frad. You're not called to be, um, Sarah Swafford, whoever else is on here. I don't even know who else is going to be on this. Jackie Francois. She's amazing and beautiful and very talented and she can sing. So if I sat back and beat myself up, I'm like, oh, I'm just not as good as Jackie because I can't sing and I don't have this beautiful voice and I don't have this gorgeous, long blonde hair. Mine's like really, I mean, it's pulled back. You can't see all my gray, but I have a lot of, a lot of gray going on in here. Um, but that's okay. I need to be me. The Lord is calling me to be Cameron Frad, not Jackie Francois. And um, he's calling you to be you. And in your family, your family life's gonna look different. Maybe you school your kids differently than I school my kids. Maybe you go to a traditional mass, or maybe you go to the extraordinary form, or maybe you go to a Byzantine church. Like, you can't say, well, that's holier than this, or that's holier. Um, and as women, I think oftentimes we play the comparison game too much. And I think that's Satan. I think that's him like tearing us down. Even right now, I like, I'm trying to look in the camera. So I'm talking to you, but I keep seeing myself and I'm aware that the sun's like going up and down and doing all sorts of craziness on my face. I'm like, mm, not good lighting. Sorry about that. Um, but that's okay. Like it's not perfect. Life's not perfect. It is messy. And, um, being a wife and mom is really messy. And sometimes you're just a big hot mess. I want to give you permission to be a big hot mess. The Lord can use that. It is, you know, like the, like the Lord is so loving and so kind and he desires to draw you close to him and he loves you and bring your big hot mess to him. When you are stressed, when you are frustrated, if you are single right now and you just desperately want to be married and you're like, oh, I just wish I could be married. Tell Jesus that. Be like, this really stinks. But also, side note, enjoy your singlehood. Enjoy not other people not relying on you for so many things. Enjoy not having to do things, like, not that I can't do things alone, but my husband and I have to discern and figure everything out together. When you're single, if you wanna go buy something, you can just go buy it. Now you actually have to talk and communicate. And it's actually, it's pretty hard. Um, and then same with kids. Like kids just, they're wonderful, but they're, they're hard. They really, really make you grow in holiness. Um, my youngest Peter was a NICU baby and I actually started my podcast, um, after, I guess as he was getting better. So he was on a feeding tube and, um, he was a NICU baby, had lots of issues, um, was on a feeding tube, skull fracture, all sorts of drama. 
and um, he kept almost dying. And we kept having to rush to the hospital. And um, I have this good girlfriend of mine, Kana Hickman. Um, Annie Hickman actually may be on here. The last uh, video conference I did, I think Annie and Kana both were on, which is really fun. They're from Houston. Um, anyhow, if you know her, you would love her too. But if you don't, just know that she is a beautiful holy woman who is very much her. And, um, and I remember after my son Peter finally started getting a little bit better, um, he just kept almost dying and I didn't sleep for a very long time. I had an emergency C-section and didn't sleep. And so those two going hand in hand and having to be nurse all the time and ho holding a little five pound bony baby is a lot, let alone when you have three other kids. Um, I felt like I was drowning and a husband that travels. So it was a lot. And um, I remember Matt trying to help me and trying to reach out to me and like, I just want my wife back. Like, what's wrong with you? Like the baby's getting better. What's wrong with you? And I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, I think you need to talk to someone. And so I remember calling Kena and um, just kind of explaining where I was. And she's like, yeah, Cameron, you need to call your doctor and you need to get on meds and you need to tell him that you're suffering from postpartum depression. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm not depressed. Like, Kena, why would you think I'm depressed? That's so silly. I just want to stay in my robe all day and not want anyone to need anything from me. Like, that's not depression. And she's like, Cameron, you know me, you love me. We've been through a lot together. Um, I'm letting you know this is what you need to do. I'm like, okay. So I, hum I ate humble pie, my humble apple pie. No, not apple pie, humble pie. I ate my humble pie and I called my doctor and I got on meds and it helped. It really helped. And um, when I was trying to come through the other side of the postpartum depression, um, I just wanted people to be real and honest and real life people and not people that were pretending all the time. And I would go on Instagram or Facebook and I would get angry and I'm like, oh my goodness, these people are complaining about their floors not looking perfect or whatever, whatever it was. And I was just like, I have real life problems. Like this stinks. Like why are not people, why are people not being real and honest and authentic? And, um, and through different circumstances, um, Jennifer Fulweiler had a, um, I met her and she had a similar situation with one of, one of her kids and just kind of helped push me in the direction of starting Among the Lilies. And um, I love this community. These ladies are tired of pretending and are ready to be real. And it is my gift and my honor to be a part of it. Um, and I feel like I did ministry prior to feeling like I fell apart. <laughs> and admitted to the whole world, I'm really broken and messed up. Um, here's my big hot mess. Um, and the ministry I did prior to it was good, but like the ministry I've done since, also through helping people with pornography addiction and things like that, like in the brokenness, I feel like the Lord's lights really shined and um, God's blessed that ministry that much more. And so um, I think share your big hot mess with someone. You don't have to do it with the world. I'm not saying like, you need to start a podcast and share it with everyone you know. No, um, but share it with someone. So for me, Kana was that phone call that I needed to make. If you right now are just in a rough time, um, call someone, call a girlfriend who will be real with you and be honest. If you don't have that community, get plugged in somewhere else. So um, we have a Facebook community. There's all sorts of things online, but um, find some real people. Find some real people that are going to be real with you and you be real with them. Tell them. Get together with a couple of your girlfriends. Invite them over for um, a cup of coffee and be like, you know what? I'm tired of pretending. I want to be real. I want something radical. I want something different. Um, all that we've been through in the last few months has made me like not want to pretend anymore. I'm just going to be real, say it as it is. And... Oftentimes girls receive it, or men and women, both, whoever you're sharing with receives it and will do it in return. So I just want to let you know that you're all beautiful and amazing and um, you're not alone. If you're a big hot mess, welcome. I too am a big hot mess. Um, marriage is a beautiful, wonderful vocation. It's really hard. <laughs> and just because you're married doesn't mean or just because you're called to marriage doesn't mean you're not called to be a saint. It just looks very different from the religious sisters. So, um, yeah, Saint um, Catherine of Siena says, if you are what you should be, you would set the world ablaze, okay? So be who the Lord's creating you to be and set the world ablaze. Just go out and do it. Um, now is the time. <laughs> be not afraid. Uh, I'm not afraid. I was born for this. Joan of Arc, that's my girl. 
um, go out there and do whatever the Lord's calling you to do and be, and don't be afraid. And yeah, marriage is a rough vocation. I will be praying for you if that's where the Lord calls you. And if he doesn't, if he calls you to be a sister or to be single, please pray for us married people. Please don't think that the grass is super green over here because it's also, it has rotten, rotten spots and spots that have been cut way too low and spots that are crazy high and full of weeds taller than our kids. Um, we need to love and support each other in our different vocations and pray for each other. Um, we joke that our kids are vocation confirmers. We've had a few people that have discerned religious life stay with us. Um, or even after they've decided their vocation, they're in white Dominican habits and they hang out with our kids. It's like, okay, ready to go back and pray and not be with <laughs> your little ones. So, um, yeah, just know that I'm praying for all of you and God bless you and whatever vocation the Lord calls you to. But, um, yeah, hold strong and be who the Lord's creating you to be. God bless.